Dig VR is a game that allows you to drive a digger and take part in various fun challenges and some weird challenges all in the comfort of your own home. But there's definitely some issues that need to be addressed and some tips for improvement in the future. This video isn't sponsored by Dig VR and it's a fully honest review. Firstly, I heard about this game from one of my channel sponsors, Venom. They posted about it at an event and it got me really excited to play the game. I then saw GTA 6 O'Clock interview Ben Hinchliffe, a former Rockstar developer that left Rockstar to step into the world of VR. And he actually works on this game, which then of course piqued my interest even further. As if you haven't guessed, I kind of like Rockstar games. Now, when we first load into this game, you can choose your settings for how comfortable you are with VR. I consider myself some Somewhat well versed with VR, so I went for the normal settings. You're then immediately spawned into a digger and given a quick tutorial on how to operate the digger. And at this point, I noticed straight away how good this game looks in VR, especially considering the limitations of the MetaQuest 3. Obviously, this game's quite cartoony, but it's done tastefully to the point where you feel like you're really in a digger, but you don't feel like you're playing The Simpsons hit and run. Now, in terms of controls, you can either use your controllers to physically grab the controls within the digger or you can click in your joysticks on the controller to switch between controlling the digger or controlling the big boom arm. And this is where I encountered my first issue with the game. Well, it could be an issue with me, but I'm going to blame the game. In every other VR game, including when you're on foot in this very game, the right joystick is the joystick you use to rotate left and right. But when controlling the digger arm, it's actually the left joystick that controls the rotation of the cab. This swapping backwards and forwards between being on foot and in the digger and of course playing other games is genuinely quite difficult to get used to. And this led me to go into the settings with the assumption that I'd be able to swap this around. And unfortunately, you can't. Now, whilst this is accurate to a real digger, it's of course not in line with most VR games. And as someone that spent a lot of time in VR, I can't rewire my brain to get used to this. Now, with that being said, one of the things that they've done absolutely amazing at is the fun side of the game. Taking activities such as bowling and hook a duck and turning them into fun little challenges. This allows a little step away from the main challenges and lets you do something slightly different. And it shows that the developers aren't just trying to make a simulator here, they're trying to make a fun game. But I hate to say it, there are two main issues here. Firstly, the controls again, they need to be reversed desperately. But secondly, the hook a duck challenge. I actually had no idea how to hook the duck. I assumed that maybe you had to just move the arm to where the hook was on the duck. But after about 10 to 15 minutes of trying this, I ended up giving up. I tried everything from using the triggers, using different buttons, and I couldn't get it down. I did try to look for instructions on how to do this and I couldn't seem to find them. They could be there and maybe I'm an idiot, but I couldn't find a way to get this to work. Now, before we get to the biggest issue with the game, I do want to say the game is insanely fun. If you look past the control issues, it is really satisfying to play. And you can tell that they've taken a lot of inspiration from Power Wash Simulator, a game in which I spent a disgusting amount of time in more than I'm ever going to admit on the internet. And there is a form of story mode in the game, which does tell a story and allow you to complete jobs for different clients, very similar to the way that Power Wash Simulator do their story mode. There's characters, there's accessories for your digger, and you can also modify your digger, which is such a cool little touch. Now, in terms of the story, as you progress through the game, you can unlock all new diggers, you can unlock, of course, different modifications for those diggers, and there's also different hidden achievements throughout the whole game. To begin with, you start on some relatively small equipment, and by the end of the game, you'll be ending up on much bigger, heavier, forms of equipment. This of course is a very similar approach to the way that Power Wash Simulator operate their game where you can get more powerful pressure washers and attachments. And of course it's also the same in Dig VR where you can get different attachments for your diggers, whether that be to break through rocks, of course different sizes of buckets. This of course adds a different layer of strategy to the game also. And then there's the soundtrack, which normally VR games have really bad soundtracks. But this is like a Colin Furs video. I absolutely love it. And they're definitely paying an interest in what the culture is doing around digging, especially in the YouTube space. Yes, there is a culture around digging. Do not argue with me. <laughs> I actually reached out to Just Add Water to see if they'd be interested in jumping on a call to discuss the game. Of course, there's no response because I'm only a small channel. So tap that subscribe button and maybe one day it will happen. But without further ado, let's get to my big, big, big issue with the game. I love VR. 
for 30 minutes at a time. VR isn't something that you can just hop into when listening to a podcast or on a call or just hanging out with friends. VR is quite an isolated experience unless it's a game like VR Chat, for example. And of course, I'm not the spokesperson for everyone, but for me, I get headaches, my eyes start to hurt after a while, and especially with games with lots of movement, they're not really games that I can play for like an hour or two at a time. And leading on from this, the way I play this game is with the controllers, not necessarily grabbing the controls within the digger, but using the thumb joysticks themselves, as it's far more chill and I'm way less likely to punch my desk. So with that being said, this game needs to be on PC and consoles. I think the best thing this game could do is remove the VR side of it. This game satisfies the same itch that Power Wash Simulator has, and digging holes with the boys whilst listening to a podcast or chatting on Discord with your mates is far more engaging than quite an isolated VR experience. This game in itself is extremely unique, and if they take the format and apply it to a keyboard or controller, or even just a PS4 or PS5 controller for example, I genuinely feel, with the addition of the controls being reversed, that this game would be a banger. For me, I genuinely do love the game, it's fun, it's unique, it's quirky, and it builds off all of the foundations that Power Wash Simulator set. But everyone I know that plays Power Wash Simulator plays it on console or PC, because games like this are a bit of a sensory overload in VR. Now I know this video seems like I'm being quite negative about the game, and the only reason that I am pointing out the predominant negatives of the game is because the rest of the game and the format and everything is perfect. I can't fault the general concept idea and gameplay of the game because it's exactly what I wanted it to be and more. I think the reason why I'm so passionate about some of the issues that this game has is because it's so close to being perfect and if they do correct some of these small little annoying parts and issues with the game and of course bring it onto consoles, this game will genuinely, in my opinion, be up there if not better than Power Wash Simulator. And for me to say that is the biggest compliment I can give any game. There's a lot of games developers out there, especially in the VR space, that will make games just for the sake of being a cash grab. With what I've played of this game so far, and of course I've not completed it yet, but everything I have played in this game so far, it genuinely feels like that they have researched in to what diggers are like. They've definitely spoke to digger manufacturers and people within the digging community or excavation community should I say, and they have tried 110% to get this game right. Hopefully my tonality of not liking some features and some aspects of this game doesn't come across in the sense that I'm trying to criticise or bash wired or just add water, it's definitely not from that place. This criticism genuinely comes from a place of this game is so close to being perfect and it's almost there. If you get the game, which isn't even expensive, but if you get the game and play it, I can promise you will enjoy it. I do feel a lot of people will struggle with the control side of it, but the foundations are definitely there, and just some small tweaks could genuinely make this one of the best selling VR games. So just add water if you happen to see this, I am a big fan and sorry if this video sounds like I'm bashing your game. I'm not. I love it. And of course, the last part of this video, I just want to give a very brief shout out to Venom. This video itself isn't a sponsored video, but obviously Venom have been supporting my channel for months now. They make different accessories, whether it be for your VR headset or chargers and accessories for your PlayStation and Xbox. They do absolutely everything. And if you use the code CYBERBOY, you can get yourself free shipping in the UK. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And I honestly do think you should definitely go and check this game out. Spend the same day, push it tomorrow.